Okay, let's talk about the AccuPlacer Next Generation Advanced Algebra and Functions uh, exam, uh, typically known as the AAF exam. If you're watching this video, I assume that you are uh, studying for the AccuPlacer. Um, it's a very important exam. There's a lot of different AccuPlacer exams. Uh, um, and basically, uh, it's kind of self-descriptive uh, of what it's purposes for, right? If you don't know why you're taking an AccuPlacer exam, it's probably, you, you should find that, you should, you know, figure that out. But basically, you, how well you do on your AccuPlacer is going to determine where your starting level is going to be, whether in, you know, college or a particular program. And if you end up starting in the wrong, you know, um, a place, then you're going to be wasting time and money. It's going to delay you on finishing your education. Okay, so you want to really you study as hard as you can, do as well as you can, so you can you know get a good head start and be at the appropriate level in your program. So these exams, these acuplacers, especially the math exams, you know they you know require or require you to study. Uh, this this AAF exam, this is. A significant exam. Okay, and there's a lot of mathematics on here, uh, and you're going to want to put the time in. And it's not enough for for someone to say, "Well, I took uh, in algebra and I did really good in high school. I took algebra two, pre-calculus, and all trig. I was all really good in geometry." It doesn't make a difference if you took the the courses and you were good in them. Okay, it, it what that is very important. But what's more, probably even more important, is how long you've been away from the subject okay how what's your retention level so you have to really get back into a state of immersion um doing a lot of proms refamiliarizing your, uh, re familiarizing yourself with all these concepts so you can walk into this uh, exam with confidence now with that being said uh if you're looking for kind of a, a good study program and you like my teaching style i offer a specific course for the AccuPlacer Next Gen AAF exam, I'll leave the link in the description. Uh, this is my test prep course that I designed, very comprehensive. So if you're looking for something um, specific, you can check that out. And there's other things out there that are available to you as well. So with that being said, let's talk about uh, one small but extremely important topic that you're going to have to know for this exam, and that's domain and range of functions. Now. This is a huge topic, and I'm not. I'm going to just kind of scratch it a little bit. I'm going to just be talking in very broad terms, but highlighting some things that that you can kind of gauge um, off of what I'm talking about. Whether you know, um, whether you know, if you understand what I'm saying, then that's pretty good. But if you're like, oh boy, I don't really understand what he's saying, then that's a, a big red flag that you need to go back and and do some uh, serious studying. But even if you understand what I'm talking about, that's still not like an indicator that, oh yeah, you're good to go for the test, right? So again, um, lots of, lots of uh, mathematics on this particular exam. But let's talk about domain and range and make the most of it for this video. Okay, so domain and range of functions. Well, in mathematics, okay, we have something called uh, relations, relations, all right, it's a big topic, uh, and uh, relations are s essentially x, y points uh, on the x, y plane, okay, I'm speaking very, very broadly here, okay, but that's basically what they are, and so in this broad world of mathematical relations, okay, a subset of relations is something called functions, all right, Huge, super important topic in mathematics. Okay, so functions are a type of relations. Okay, uh, and there's tests to determine if something is a function. Right. So one thing would be like the vertical line test, um, and then there's other ways to kind of look at to determine if something is in fact a function. Now, if something is a function, then uh, there's all different type of things we can uh, you know, ex different um, ways we can express it, different things we can think about it, etc. And one of the most important things is domain and range. So now let's kind of erase this here. So let's look at a real basic function here. Okay, so this is a function, right? So we have f of x equals 2x plus 1. And I'm skipping over all kinds of stuff right now. 
so in no way this is is this kind of like a formal lesson on functions and everything else. But you know, again, that's not the purpose of, of this video. The video is just to kind of get you, you know, thinking about this and seeing where you're at. All right. So here is a function. We were uh, we say this as f of x equals two x plus one. Now the way this works is we can evaluate this function, right? This is a rule, okay? So what it means is this x here, if I put in a number, like let's say here, like 2, let's use a different number, let's say 3, I, want, I would want to evaluate the function for 3, okay? f of 3, I'm trying to find out what is the value of f of 3. Well, the rule says this, this 2x, it says, whatever number you put in here, just replace all the x's you see over here. So this x is, this is 2 times x, so it's going to be 2 times 3 plus 1. So f of 3 will be what 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1, or 7, right? So f of 3 equals 7, okay? So this is a basic function here. And let's go ahead and write it over here. So it's a rule, okay? Now, what I want you to think about this rule is this. This x represents the input value, the input value. Okay, so I'm going to put something into the function. In this case, it was 3. And then when I finished up doing whatever I had to do, I got an output value, output, right? And that was 7, right? So in this example, I, my input was 3 and my output was 7. Okay, so I put something into the function rule, and then it kind of spit out this number. In this case, it was 7. So more formally, when you're dealing with the function, your input values, the numbers, the values you put in are called the domain. Okay, and then on a particular function, all the output values that you can get is called the range. All right, so if you're with me so far and you're like, yeah, I kind of remember that, I get that, then fantastic, okay? So this is where I want to kind of take this uh, video here and talk, you know, just a little bit more advanced, okay? So in domain and range, there's, specifically with domain, there are, there can be restrictions and they, uh, there certainly will be restrictions on some functions. So let's let's talk about, actually, let's let's stick with this problem here for a second. So if I asked you, what is the domain, what is the domain of this function? You should be able to, to tell me what the domain is, okay? So the domain is not three, okay? I could put in any number here. I could put in 10. I could put in negative five, right? I could put in zero. I could put in any value, and when I plug it in and I replace this X with any one of these values, I'll get some sort of number, right? So in this particular function, the domain is the set of all values I can plug into the function, all right? That's the question. When we're, we're talking about domain, and let me just back up here. For the purposes of the AF exam, you're going to be, we'll be dealing with complex numbers, but we're, we're dealing with uh, domain and range uh, function questions. You're probably generally going to be uh, uh, restricted to the real number set, okay, the real number line. So here's a number line, right? Zero in the middle, all your positive numbers over here, all your negative numbers over here. This is the real number system, okay? If you're already kind of lost what I'm talking about, that's a big, like, alarm bells going off that you, you got some studying to do, okay? Again, this test is comparable to what you would want to be, you know, at a high level for, like, the uh, SAT or, a, or ACT, Okay, it's advanced, not just algebra. This is the these, this topic I'm talking about here is algebra. This is advanced algebra. Okay, all right. So let's continue to press forward here. So the domain, more formally, is the set of all input values that you can you can plug into the function. So in this case, there is no restriction. I can plug in any number along the real line, the real number line, and it'll be okay, right? I can plug in a negative value, I'll get a number out. I can plug in zero, right? Two times zero, zero plus one. So my answer would just be one. There's everything is fine. So my domain in this case is the set 
of all real numbers. And there's a lot of ways we can express that. This is one uh, way that we can do it, but that's basically it. So I can plug in any real number along the real number line into this function. It's not going to hurt it. I'll always get a number out. And my range will be uh, all real numbers as well. Okay. So pretty straightforward stuff. Hopefully you're, you're, you're with me. But let's move this forward a bit. Okay. I want to talk about functions uh, and where we can get in trouble. So it's basically, let's do something like this. I'm going to write two functions here. And I'll tell you what I'm doing in a second. Okay, so let, now let's just discuss what the domain could be for these particular function, okay? Uh, these functions here. All right, so here we have a function. We have a, a rational function, okay? So I can plug in. Here's my input values, right? So if I'm trying to find, let's say, f of 1, let me give myself some more room, it would be what? It would be 1 over 1 minus 5, right? I'm going to replace these x's with 1, and I'm going to get 1 over negative 4, okay? And that would be good to go. That's my answer. So f of 1, f of 1 is negative 1 fourth, no problem. Let's take a look at this function over here. Let's say I, had, I was trying to find f of 2. Okay, no, let's not do that. Let's do f of 10. That would be what? I would replace this x here with 10. So 10 plus negative 4 is going to be 6. So f of 10 will be the square root of 6. Okay, so still we're evaluating these functions. No problem. So far, everything looks pretty good. Okay, let's go back to this first function example, okay? And let me erase both of these guys. So I have two functions, and they're, um, you know, they seem to be okay. But the, if I ask you what is the domain on these functions, well, these two examples I picked out here, you, we have restrictions, okay? It's not going to be so nice and easy as our first function here where the domain is all real numbers. So what am I talking about? Well, there's two things you need to know about when you're talking about domain and functions. The first is this. You can never, in a function, we can never end up with zero in the denominator, okay? Go, you go to your calculator and take uh, 7 divided by 0. Not 0 divided by 7. 7 divided by 0, you'll see you'll get an error, okay? So mathematics, that's an undefined operation. So we can never end up with 0 in the denominator. That's bad. Another thing that we don't want to end up with is taking the square root of a negative number, okay? So in the real number set, that's also not good, okay? Our calculators get confused. A square root of a negative number is actually something called a complex number. But in terms of function restrictions, like again, like what I said, you're going to be, you're probably in the, uh, in particular problems, they'll say in the set of real numbers. So I'm just telling you as a math teacher, you know, you're going to have to pay attention. So we don't want a square root, we, we don't, we're going to want to restrict any numbers that cause a negative number or value underneath the square root and any values that will cause a zero to show up in the denominator. So let's take a look at our first example here. So is there any values where, um, such that we plug in something here that will cause a zero in the denominator? Well, clearly there is. It's 5, right? So if I do f of 5, I'm going to end up with, what, 5 over 5 minus 5. And 5 minus 5 is going to give me a zero in my denominator down here. And that's bad, okay? So this 5 is not allowed. So I'm like, ah, i got to keep you out, 5. You're not, you're not allowed to participate here. Uh, in the domain, you can't be in the domain team, all right? <laughs> you can't, you're not going to be in the set of numbers that are allowed to go into this function, so we got to kick it out, okay? So in this case, the domain would be, we can write it in all kinds of ways. We could say it's all real numbers except x cannot be 5, okay? Again, there's various ways to ex express this, but what I want you to know is that there are restrictions. So when you see a fraction, you're looking for what value would cause a zero in the denominator. Now, by the way, too, 
you can have a fraction. You can also have like a negative uh, square roots. These can get much more complicated, but I'm trying to break up these two conditions separately. Okay. All right. So that's the first condition. Now over here, I, I want to stay away from any X values that is going to leave me with a negative situation. So for example, if I, I'm trying to find what F of two is, I'm going to have two plus negative four. I'll end up with the square root of negative two. That's bad. So when I plug it in this two, I got the square root of negative two. So two is not allowed, but that's only one value. Okay. So what I have to do in this particular problem is I got to say, hmm, x plus negative 4, okay, I need this to be always what? Positive or 0. So how can I solve this? Well, we can use, or how can I um, find those values? Well, I can use an inequality, right, to solve. So I could say x plus negative 4, I need you to be greater than or equal to 0, which means that's positive, right? Or zero. Zero is fine. The square root is zero, zero. So when I solve this, I'm going to get x has got to be greater than or equal to four. Okay. So if you think about it, any values less than or so um, less than four, like positive two, is going to cause a negative situation. If it's four, four plus negative four is zero. That's okay. Okay. So in this case, the domain would be um, real numbers. Okay, well, actually, we could just say it like this. X is greater than or equal to 4. Okay, that's fine. All right, because we're talking about the real number set. So if you're with me so far and you understand these principles, then that's good. Okay, but that does not in no way mean that you're like, you know, you need a lot more practice because there's a lot more. I can make these problems much more sophisticated, much more challenging where there's factoring involved, et cetera, et cetera. But this gives you a sense of the level of mathematics that you're going to need to know for the Accuplacer, you know, next-gen AAF exam, okay? We're to advanced algebra and functions, right? A little taste of it. So hopefully you got something out of it. Let's go and wrap this up. Um, again, you know, my advice to you is to get some sort of good study plan going. Use some good study material, trust in study material. You don't have to use any one program. You can kind of use a hybrid. If you like my teaching style, again, I have a specific, very comprehensive course uh, specifically for for this exam. Uh, the link is in the description of this video. I also have a ton of um, uh, videos on my YouTube channel, literally hundreds that you can watch. So hopefully you consider uh, subscribing. I'm posting all the time. So if you understand the way I teach math, you like the way I teach math, then you can get a lot out of my channel and my videos, and you'll get all, uh, definitely a lot out of my uh, formal course on this. Um, hey, if you enjoyed the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And last but not least, leave me some feedback. It's the only way I know how I'm doing. And uh, I try to read as many comments as possible. I get a lot of comments, but I do try to read them. It lets me know um, how I can improve and it gives me ideas on uh, future videos. So I definitely wish you all the best on Accuplacer. Study hard. It's really important. Um, you know, you don't want to waste time or money. You know, life's too short <laughs> without having to take an unnecessary uh, course. Uh, you know, place into that level. You know, do the, do the right thing. Uh, thanks for your time and have a great day.